Hey, good people. Welcome to the Networking with Michelle show. I'm your host, Michelle Gomez, where we discuss life strategies with a little bit of entrepreneurial advice. Oh my God, it feels so good. It feels so good to be on a microphone. It's been a minute. I haven't recorded an episode since July. Since July. So if you clicked on this episode, you saw the title, Podcast Breakdown, and you're like, what in the world is going on with Michelle? But I'm about to spill it. I'm about to tell you what's been going on with me. Uh, but I'm so fortunate to record the 100, 184 episode of this podcast. And I think it's fitting, right? It's, you know, 184 is not a round number. It's not 185. It's not 200. But um, it's this is probably going to be a two two-part episode. So I think it's fitting. Uh, so I can tell you why this is a podcast breakdown. And this ain't about me breaking down how to launch a podcast. So if that's what you're in for. This ain't it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that now. But uh, this is really about, you know, a mental breakdown. It's really about just reevaluating what do I want to do with this show? Uh, what do I want to do with this podcast and how can I level up and how can I challenge myself? Uh, but before I can get into that, I got to tell you what has broken me down to question all of those things. And I think when I look back, I started this podcast April 2015. And this podcast has taken me beyond measure, right? Beyond measure. Uh, to the point where I was just focusing on my personal brand, marketing, network, networking, business, business, business. And I've evolved as a person, as a woman, as a businesswoman, so many aspects of my life. And I've been able to share, I want to say, just about everything in my life on this podcast. And the, there was times when I was struggling personally and I was like, I have to open this up because my personal struggles are affecting my business struggles. And we are so much more than a business idea or that entrepreneur that we're striving to be because we got a factor in our health. And I was like, okay. And then our health is going on beyond, our health is going beyond fitness and nutrition. It's our mental health, strong advocate of that. It's about wellness, the well-being. You know, what are some other things that we need to be considerate of? Um talking about relationships, right? Relationships with family, friends, uh, partners, spouses. And that plays a part of your professional life. And as much, there's always a lot of talk on niche down and all this kind of things. And I agree, but like this stuff is intertwined and it's a delicate balance to, to obtain to obtain balance, right? It's a delicate, it's a delicate balance to obtain balance. It's very delicate to be of sound mind in your personal, professional life. And then you have the buckets, the categories, um, in each, in each one of the, the bigger categories, right? And I just felt like I needed to bring people on to help me, to help you, to help us. That way we can become better people. And I'm forever grateful for the relationships that I have, uh, the, the conversations as well as the relationships that have come of this podcast. Um, but there just comes a time. There comes a time when you have to take a step back. And I feel like I was forced to take a step back. Like, Michelle, what are you doing? And it was on July 10th. Uh, woke up, normal day, felt good, felt great. Um, don't remember anything <laughs> particular to upset me that day and within two hours things got crazy and that's because I was doing too much what I was doing I have no idea but I was doing too much and before uh before that Tuesday I got an email from a staffing agency and they're like hey we're having a career fair um, Tuesday and Wednesday, like from 10 to 3, like something in the middle of the day. And I usually podcast around that time and I already had an interview scheduled. 
So I knew about the career fair, but it was one of those things, you know, got the email, but it's in the back of my mind. I didn't plan on going, knowing good and well. I should have been there, but whatever. So Tuesday comes, wake up, good day, um, have a podcast scheduled. Um, I think it was 11 o'clock my time or whatever. And I don't know what time this happened, but I got an email from, from the person. So the person I was interviewing had an assistant. So the assistant was communicating with me. And I think we had already rescheduled the interview. Okay, so they were doing some remodeling in the house or something. We rescheduled the interview. So, so, okay, cool. So that Tuesday would have been the second time for me to try to interview her. Hopefully this makes sense. Please follow along. So I get an email and they wanted to push the time back. And I'm like, okay, cool. Because I didn't have anything planned for the rest of the day. At least when I look back on my phone for that day, I didn't have anything on the calendar. But mind you, that career fair is kind of in the back of my mind. Like, So I was like, okay. So we push it back. And... Um, so I got an email, we pushed the time back or whatever, and the time comes for us to do the interview, I'm online, and no one's there, like, no one shows up, so I'm like, what in the world? So this is probably the biggest pet peeve of mine, right, because time is valuable, and the thing about time People don't like their time being wasted because we agreed on a certain time, right? We agreed to do the interview at this time. We agreed to schedule the doctor's appointment at this time. And now you have me wasting our agreed time. That's the thing about time. You are wasting our agreed time to do work. That sounds like a blog post. So, no one's there. So I'm kind of so I'm, now I'm getting pissed off. Okay, whatever I was before, I don't know, but now I'm getting pissed off. And um, I sent a message, and I was just like, um, jumped online. Usually, I give like a 15 minute window, sending emails, hey, I'm available, whatever. Jumped online, no one showed up. Um, cancel the interview. There was a disconnect. Okay, so I'm emailing the assistant or whatever. Um, I decide, hey, now I got this free time. I'm going to go to the job interview. So I'm getting ready. The lady I'm supposed to interview calls me on my cell phone. Um... And I was I was surprised, like, no, like the interview it's like I thought and I felt bad. This is and this was my fault. I felt bad because I'm thinking, um, the interview's canceled. And she's like, No, it's not canceled, you know, da da da. And I was just so confused and I'm like, Well, I apologize, I'm getting ready to head out now. Da 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 da. And I made the mistake. I made the mistake. Um I was responding to a different email. BS, I know. But it was just craziness. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. But I was communicating. Um, I don't know. It's just communicating with the wrong person. And I... <sighs> craziness. Chaos. Okay? And at first... I was like, well, you know, I just agreed to cancel the interview with your assistant. I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking they, they're probably trying to get in touch with you. You know, I don't know. And later on, it dawned on me and I felt bad. I was like, oh, snap. Okay. And I was like, well, we can reschedule. So I'm thinking, no worries. Can do it again next week. Um, I go to the career fair with the staffing agency. They love my resume that I lied on. So this was a staffing agency to staff account 
accounts payable positions. Now, I have a degree in finance, but I know nothing about accounting. And but my friend, my best friend, shout out to a card, hooked it up, hooked the resume up because I needed a job. Love my resume. And they had sent me the staffing agency sent me to an interview the next day. They kept me busy for a week and a half. And I just started interviewing places. Okay, so that was in July. So that doesn't sound like a breakdown, but this is the thing. Before I go into the job, the job search, um, I was doing too much, right? And I sound like I was just a regular day. I was at home chilling, minding my business or whatever. But what I realized is that uh, the podcast, these interviews were creating an unhealthy anxiety. Like nothing, and this wasn't the first interview, nothing about scheduling interviews as easy as one, two, three. Okay. And it's just, it's the constant, it's the constant struggle of reaching out to people or people, this person reached out to me, right? This agency or whatever reached out to me and I, I had to interview one of the clients that I'm trying to interview another person. So you got this agency that you pay them and they'll find podcasts for you. But then I'm communicating with the assistant to tell the person I need to interview. And it was just getting crazy, right? And there's, and this wasn't the first time. And that's the thing. And I'm probably telling the story and it's just like, oh, it was just one person. Da, da, da. But this is an ongoing thing, right? This is something that I've literally week after week, person after person, I would go through. Now, the majority of the people that I do interview, they're solo dolo. You know, I'm communicating with them directly. Or lots of times I don't know until the day of the interview and we have these situations where they got to reschedule or push the time by. And that's where the chaos usually begins. And I have turned down... Um, several interviews over the three years I've turned on several interviews because I'm like look I don't podcast all day and even if I did I still have things I want to do I can't interview you when you're ready to be interviewed right that's not fair and it, it, I understand it gets complicated especially when you get into time zones and things of that nature but I just can't sit here all day every day with my laptop up waiting for people to be interviewed, you know, and I kind of feel, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but I kind of felt that I would have a guest that treated the interview that way, right? And once again, if it's one guest, you're like, you know, it's pissed, I could be pissed off, but it's like, okay, cool. But when it's a number of guests, the shit is irritating. Oh. The shit is irritating, okay? So that's one thing with the podcast. The second thing was uh, I wasn't happy with some of the interviews, right? Um, There's a handful of interviews, I would say, I'll just say this year, this year, because I know I, I have some gaps in there, that I just wasn't happy with the interviews. I wasn't happy with some of it was sound quality, um, some of it was, once again, I feel like not respecting the interview, feeling like this is just a podcast, um, and this is not radio, you know, this is not you going into a Radio 1 or an iHeart radio station, and I understand we doing stuff on the laptop through Zoom, Skype, maybe we'll meet in person or whatever, but, um, I, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that gets excited about interviews, but I actually take pride in interviews, right? And I know and I love doing podcast interviews, and I don't get into the details of how large is your audience or whatever, but I feel like 
the podcast interviews, like that's these interviews in the past, especially 2014, 2015, like my podcast interviews when I was a guest on other people's shows, like those interviews prepared me to be interviewed on Radio One. Those interviews prepared me to be on Fox 26. Those interviews have prepared me to be on bigger platforms. And I still aspire to be on bigger platforms one day. TV, radio, or larger podcasts. But I think sometimes I don't get that same courtesy, right? And and just hear me out because I'm, I'm going to check myself pretty soon. Um, and I try not to be hard on people that maybe this is their first interview or maybe this is their first interview on a podcast because I had to start somewhere. And um, someone was fortunate, nice enough to allow me to, you know, be a guest on their show. My, I was first interview, second interview. I was introduced to podcasting. Someone gave me grace uh, other than Christ, right? Someone gave me grace and I try to be mindful and extend that same grace to people. But once again, it gets challenging when there's a possibility that can (laughs) trying to be careful with my words here. Um, My initial thought is the possibility that it can ruin your brand. Now, I don't think any interview has been that bad that it will ruin my brand. Um, But I think there have been some interviews that... Ruin sounds harsh. Hopefully, I know someone out there feels me. Uh, Ruin sounds harsh, but it probably it it wasn't up to par, and therefore it hasn't been uniformed with the quality of work that I have presented over the past several years. Okay, Uh, whether it's through the podcast or as well as the visual brand, the name brand of Michelle Gomez that I'm trying to grow. Okay. Uh, So that was another thing. Um, I felt like guests weren't taking the interview serious. Um, It's a podcast. Most of the people I know are familiar that, excuse me, that I've interviewed are familiar with podcasts. Um, And this, look, this is, and I send people out like, hey, we're going to do the podcast via Zoom. Now, Zoom has an option where you can call in. Now, audio quality is important. So you may not want to be driving on the phone trying to do a podcast interview, right? That may not be the best. Um, Or if you're on the computer, you know, just phone etiquette. And that's that's been a problem because if your phone is ringing or if you decide to answer the phone or if you're driving... That makes it hard for me, excuse me, it makes it hard for my editor to edit, right? And usually when it's, when you're doing an edit, it's going to be something like maybe removing the noise. Um, There's ums, right? Filler words such as that. Um, This episode's not getting edited. But (laughs) but it, it makes it hard for the editing, right? There's only so much you can do. When it comes to that, uh, there's, and even with the background noise, that can be tricky. Or maybe I just don't pay enough for editing. I don't know. It could be all of that. But it is what it is. So, coupled with the time and then not, re- well, I feel like, you know, I'm sensitive about my art, man. So, coupled with that, I was like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this, Okay. So even with those, I was like, all right, Michelle, we need to take a step back. What can you do? What can you control? So now I got to put boundaries in place. Okay. Oh, another thing. People are like, hey, Michelle, can I be on your show? And I'm like, okay, what do you want to talk about? Some people don't know. Well, if you don't know, you're not going to on my show. 
And these are people like I know what they do. They're good business owners or whatever. You know, I know I know what they could talk about, but it's not up to me. You know, you're pitching yourself. You should know. Um, I felt like I mentioned Grace earlier. So with that, I felt like I was doing friends and colleagues a solid. Like, yeah, you can come on my show. You know, it's like, I know you. I know what you're about. So, yeah. But what do you want to talk about? Like, what are you focused on right now? They may, Some of them didn't know. They would come back to me. Some of them knew. Um, with that, I would have colleagues that would have clients that would co- want to come on the show. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, they're cool. I'll reach out to them, whatever. And I and But their clients probably weren't the best fit for the show, right? Like, it sounds good on theory, <laughs> reading it, reading the email, but it probably wasn't a good fit, right? Uh, no website. A website, I don't know if it's in the middle of being done. Uh, we can go back to sound quality, not being prepared. So all of those things were just taking a toll on me. So I was like, all right, Michelle, we need to check yourself. What can you do? What can you control? So now I got to put boundaries, stricter boundaries on the podcast. Mind you, I haven't interviewed anyone since July, so I haven't implemented this yet. But this is what I've been working on. So now I got to create a sheet. And there's a lot of hosts that do this to begin with. You know, like this is what you should expect. Um, the, the time frame, what I'm recording on, you should have a microphone, you should turn your phone off, you should turn the AC off. So now I got to come back and create a document to prep people on what to expect for the show. So I was like, okay, maybe, and I'm hoping this can eliminate it. And then I also have to say no, right? I have to, I have to do a better job vetting people. Like, yes, you're cool. But if your client doesn't meet X, Y, Z, they can't be on the show. Right? So I have to have a hard no because I need to find myself. I need to take myself to another level when it comes to the show. Then I bought an interview handbook, right? Because I want to learn how I can be a better interviewer. Like how can I be Barbara Walters, Diane Sawyer, Oprah Winfrey? That's a whole nother caliber, right? But how can I be a good interview? Like, I want to get to a point where people want, um, I have a great, 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 great caliber of people that want to be on my show, will that allow me to be on their show, and then I also want my show to grow, right? And numbers, and well, numbers as well as opportunities, So it's a couple of different things that I have to lock in and really uh, figure figure a few things out. I was like, okay, do I want to be in a studio? If I'm in a studio, how is that going to work? Because a lot of my interviews, people are not in Houston, right? So I've been thinking, like, how much more do I want to invest into my show? And that's really where the podcast breakdown has taken place. And I'm just really challenged by it. Like, I really, really am challenged by it. Um, Because, and I'm the number one person, I'll say this in my speaking engagements, start where you are. Start where you are. Start with what you have. Start your podcast on your cell phone, on your laptop. But I'm three years in, and I'm like, I need a level up, right? So I know I need a level up, but how am I going to level up? Or am I going to just quit? And if I quit, though, it's not a bad quit. I feel like if I was to quit now, it's not a bad quit. And I've been trying to figure out, like, how do you know when it's time to quit? How do you know when it's time to quit your podcast? And I do, like this is a successful podcast. I have a this is 184 episodes. This has been three years. Like this, I don't know. <laughs> I think my first metric was to record. 
<laughs> just record. <laughs> just record the show. Just talk and record. And I have gone beyond that. So if I quit, it's not even a failure. It's not even a failure. And it's nothing to start another show and another show because the ideas are there. But it's like, what am I going to do with the podcast? What am I going to do with the show? And that's been on my mind uh, for a long time, uh, since July. And I've been fortunate because I bashed the episodes and I've been releasing them weekly. Um, for the most part. But yeah, I, I just... Changes are coming, y'all. Changes are coming. And I'll probably get into those changes in part two. All right. So that's the podcast breakdown. So I'm going to pick up... I'm going to pick up with the job part. Okay, just took a sip of water. All right. So I went to the staffing agency, went to the open house. They had me working. The next day had an interview. It was a good interview. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, I think... So I went to the open house on Tuesday. Wednesday had an interview. That Friday, I had another interview. It was a good interview, but there was just something about the place. I was like, I don't want to work here. Like, I know this job is going to stress me out. Okay. And it was in Clear Lake. So that's about 45 minutes away from my house. I was like, the, the drive, I don't want it to head that way again. I was like, I, I don't want to be here, but I felt like they were going to hire me. Okay. So I believe a week later, the following week, I got a call from the staffing agency and they wanted me, they called me and they wanted me to work somewhere the next day. And I'm like, mind you, y'all, I don't have any AP experience. I done lied on my resume. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm like, well, anywhere you go, they'll train you. Ah. So I was like, ma'am, I can't start work the next day. I have plans, but if they want to schedule an interview, I'll be glad to do so. And this little lady went off on me. <laughs> she went off on me and she was like, um, you know, it was, I don't even remember what she said, but it was one of those things where like, you know, you came in here saying you were um, immediately available for work and you must not be serious. I'm like, well, she had an attitude in her voice. And I was like, ma'am, like I have plans tomorrow. Like, I don't know what I was doing, but it's like, I have plans if you want to do an interview, you know, I could set aside an hour or two and do an interview, but I can't go to some unknown territory and work for eight hours. That's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> so she hung up. So I'm thinking the staffing agency's done with me. You know, I'm like, they probably, you know, blackballed me in the database or whatever. Da -da -da. So later on that day, I got a call from the law firm. And this job, I applied for it on myself, by myself on Indeed.com. It was like, hey, we got your resume. Want to know if you're still interested? You know, quick conversation. I was like, yeah, cool. Da, da, da. Uh, excuse, I'm sorry. They, they sent me an email to schedule a call. So I was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. So did the call. Great call. I looked on the email. that had the address. Address is like, 10 minutes from my house. I was like, oh, I want this job. Okay. <laughs> Y'all got to understand how big Houston is. So I'm like, okay, cool. So the law firm called me. I'm like, okay. Um, had the phone interview. That was good. And then I was scheduled for um, an interview. They called me like during the week and I was scheduled for an interview on a Monday on a Monday. I feel like I need to pull out my phone, get these dates together. Okay, so the law firm, we decided to do an interview on Monday the 23rd. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I had that interview scheduled. The staffing agency called me on 
a Thursday. And I'm like, hey, Michelle, this job just came up. Would you be interested in interviewing? So I was like, okay, cool. So that Friday morning, I went to this company in Pasadena and interviewed. And it was a great interview. Like, I think it was one of the best interviews I ever had. And it wasn't so much, I was just so relaxed. It was one of those things where, like, this is the place to be. This is where I belong. And the manager was a black, young black guy. It was like, I'm pretty sure we have mutual friends, but he was just really cool and emotionally intelligent. Like he was just asking the right questions and it wasn't, and then he had to write the right tone. It wasn't those typical standardized behavioral interview questions. It was just something different. And then I um, also had to of the team members there too and they asked a few questions it was just a good vibe okay so great interview i left there i was actually meeting my mentor for breakfast um the interview must have been like at nine o'clock i was meeting my mentor at 10 30 on the other side of town so i'm chopping up with my mentor my phone is in my purse i ain't got no worries you know cool like just had a good interview Got an interview on Monday. Like, I'm I'm eating right now, so I'm happy. So I leave my mentor, grab my phone. Staffing agency is blowing up my phone. phone. Missed phone calls, messages, all this kind of stuff. I call the lady back, and she was like, hey, that company wants to make you an offer. It's like, what? I accepted the offer. Cool. So I'm like, okay. So I accepted the offer because this was on July 20th and they were like, they want you to start work on August 1st. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I can I got plenty of time. I got like a week and a half for me to do what I need to do. Plus, hopefully this law firm will make an offer too. So Monday, I uh, interview with the law firm. I was chilling in the interview. I was so relaxed. The dude was like, so why'd you apply for the job? I was like, because I check off everything on the list. And he was like, yeah, you do. And I was just rocking in the chair, like, whatever. You know, like, I'm good. I got this interview and a job offer. You can't tell me nothing. All right, so I'm feeling myself. Okay. <laughs> but it was a good interview. And it was funny because I felt like he talked. The most and I was just looking at him like okay whatever um but I was learning a few things and the funny thing is what people don't know it's like I've never had a marketing job before like I literally got my master's in marketing and started my business like everything marketing done and I've prior to that everything has been like guerrilla marketing like just hustle work researching researching it figuring out getting my own clients applying stuff and going from there. So this is like my first marketing job in a formal setting. Oh, I'm telling you I got the job, right? So, but I was um, really nervous about the situation. It's like, I want the job, but this is gonna be interesting. So I asked him, I asked the attorney in the interview, so I was like, what's your interview process like? And he's like, well, I'm gonna do interviews today and then some more on Wednesday, and I have a decision by Friday. So I'm like, okay, cool. If he has a decision by Friday, Monday, the latest, I can back out, and I don't have to start working at the other company. So I was like, okay, cool. This is working out perfectly. So um, Thursday or Friday comes, late afternoon, I get the phone call from a law firm. So I'm thinking, this is the call. They about to make me an offer. I'm ready. And the lady calls me and she was like, oh, Michelle, can you do another interview on Wednesday, August 1st? And I'm like, uh, is there any way? And this is a Skype interview. Mind you, August 1st would have been the first day for me to work at the other company. So I'm like, is there any way we can push it up? And they're like, no. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm like, phone call, I got you, but how am I gonna do a Skype interview in my call in my car? So so Wednesday, August 1st comes, start the job, I go there, two o'clock for the interview comes, the Skype interview, I walk out, 
trying to get my laptop set up. And the, the attorney, the second attorney was already calling me. Or I missed his call on Skype, so he called me on my cell phone. So thank God it worked out. And I just talked to him like we were friends. Like I, I was so relaxed. I think I was at a point where so much shit had already hit the fan. <laughs> Like it was, I was already at the point where I had let go. Like I had already let go of things and let God, like I've never been in a position where I had two job offers running at the same time. It was, I've always been in that position where I had to take the first available job, right? Cause I needed the money. Or I left one job and went to another because I wanted more money, right? So this was really interesting to me because now, the only thing that sucked though, it was a staffing agency. So I wasn't really in the position to negotiate versus two permanent positions. Um, so did a good interview, phone interview on August 1st. By that Friday, they emailed me and I spoke, they emailed me with an offer, then we jumped on the phone and I accepted the position. And I was like, hey, you know, I got I got some things I need you to take care of. I need a week to take care of them. And um, they honored that. <laughs> so I had to put a week's, I put a, a notice in. Uh, so I only worked with that company for six days. So it was like Wednesday through Friday and then Monday through Wednesday. And um, I, I felt so bad because they were telling me prior to me getting there, so many people were ghosting. They were ghosting at the interview. Uh, they weren't showing up for interviews or they made an offer to another lady, but she didn't show up um, on the first day of work. And then they're like, oh, they finally got someone. And then, you know, I'm leaving. But I was talking to the manager and he was like, look, I get it. And he was like, I just appreciate you telling me. I was like, yeah, I was like, I know I haven't been here long, but I'm at least I try to honor my word. Woman of integrity, something very important to me. And um, so since August 13th, I've been at Sella Fistout Law Firm as the marketing manager. And I'm going to be honest, those first four to six weeks were tough. Uh, but now I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm comfortable. I'm settled. I know what I'm doing. There's only six of us in the office. And I mean, it really is a nice environment. Family is important to each of us. And just looking out for each other, you know, on the small things the, to the big things. Um, and I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be right now. Look, episode two is about to be fired because I feel like I'm jotting things down but so July to August was just crazy and then on top of that so I started the job August 13th on September 6th my mom had knee replacement surgery on I don't I think it was her left knee and she needs she still needs it on the other one and my mom, the surgery went well. The day after the surgery, she had a very low blood pressure to the point where she passed out. Uh, so she was kept in the hospital longer than expected. And I didn't realize how my mom's knee surgery was going to take a toll on me in the sense of me just helping her out. Uh, and and the, she was in rehab for about three weeks two weeks, two to three weeks. So I was going to rehab damn near every day. I was going to the hospital every day. I was going to rehab every day. I just checking on her. And, you know, this was a person where I could at least, you know, call one, call once a day. And it was all good to the point now I'm seeing her. And, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you what it is. Houston's so big and so spread out. And if you're working eight to five, right, you think you have from six to ten to yourself, right? Time to get home. 
um, and, my, and to keep in mind, I literally stay ten minute no ten minute drive to my job from my apartment to my jobs. Ten minutes, no traffic. Eight minutes, no traffic, according to Google Maps. Traffic, twenty to thirty minutes, which is really not bad, but it's like a four or four mile commute. To the point now, like literally, every if I'm taking care of my mom, everything's out the way. You know, so I'm driving to the medical center, paying for parking, driving to the rehab facility, which was closer to my house. Um, but I've just been catering to my mom in the evening and still trying to manage a few things here and there when it comes to meetings and networking events, but nothing major. But it has really uh, taken a lot of my time. And now she's healing fine. Uh, we decided to propose, postpone the surgery on the second leg to next year. And uh, been picking up my brother and I, we've just been working together as well as uh, as well as other family friends. I'm picking her up, dropping her off, taking her to physical therapy, running her errands. Whew. It was like, that was another thing. It's like, okay, can I run my mom's errand? Do I got to Instacart it? I'm like, Mom, I will pay for an Uber. I don't want to take Uber. Someone's going to kidnap me. And my knee's bad. I can't fight. I'm like, girl, you better beat them with that cane. You know, she. So I'm my mom's Uber. But um, I'm just grateful, right? Just grateful for um, for me being in the job that will allow me to take care of my mom, right? Being at a job that is providing me with the disposable income to take care of my mom for those little things. So when she's like, I need some fruit, I need some water, I'm like, okay, bet. You know, I have this meeting tonight, so I don't want to I don't want to drive, but now I can Instacart it. Right? And man, it's just those little things uh, that's a blessing. And I don't Instacart it. Shit's expensive. But then you have moments like that when it's worth it, right? And um, so just trying to do little things to make life easier for the two of us at this time. And um, still major shout out to my brother too because he's he's been holding it down as well. Man, I think this is part one, y'all. This is part one. This is 45 minutes. This, oof, I could keep going. Like there is so, so much stuff that I'm still leaving out. But the other stuff is like the good stuff, right? It's the stuff that I'm, I'm working on. Uh, um, uh, my five-year plan. Uh, things that I just want to share with y'all. So I don't know. This might be the three-part episode. Because uh, I feel like that was some of the bad stuff. Part two would be the good stuff. And then uh, part three, we might get into the podcasting stuff. Uh, the changes with the podcast that are in the pipeline. But it just feels good to talk to myself looking at the wall as I talk to you. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, God, life, uh, life is challenging, but life is good. And as I keep my head up, I want to encourage you to keep your head up. Because uh, there's an, a, a reward at the end, right? Uh, and I don't... There's a reward at the end of the struggle, right? Because this journey is continuous. Um, but as long as you keep pressing forward, you will receive your rewards, those milestones, those mile markers to be like, okay, I'm on the right path. I'm doing the right thing. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And I just want to encourage you. Um, hopefully you got some nuggets out of this. Um, have empathy for yourself, uh, take care of yourself, uh, take care of your family, friends, and challenge yourself because we because we have to grow. If you're not growing, yeah, I don't even know what to say. It's like you have to grow. Hopefully you grow in every, because we have the capacity to grow. Like God stretches us beyond measure. It's just that we're afraid to uh, challenge to challenge ourselves when it comes to that. 
So look, uh, I'm going to record a part two podcast breakdown part two that's going to come out next Wednesday. So I, I can tell you that if you haven't noticed, okay, uh, one of the first changes in the podcast, <clears throat> one of the first changes in the podcast, the episodes are going to come out on Wednesday now, okay? And the reason being, uh, the reason being, I have two clients that I help produce, manage their shows. They come out on Monday. And my weekends, I'll say between that Saturday to Monday, was just becoming too tough uh, for me to take care of all three shows on a Monday, right? On the same weekend. So um, it was it was one of those things where... I could, it's easier for me to have my show up on a Monday in most cases um, because I have my notes and, and, you know, I batch my episodes and everything's there. Or it's one of those things where I try to take care of my clients first and then mine gets pushed back. So I'm thinking if I put mine on Wednesday, I have a little bit more leeway to kind of take care of my clients first and take care of myself. Uh, so, yes, expect networking with Michelle on Wednesdays now. Probably should have said that in the beginning, um, but I will mention that on the upcoming episodes. And I'm still still pushing through um, with a few things with my schedule because, you know, my schedule is not 100% mine. I'm still helping my mom, um, but I'm still trying to push through. But I'm here. I'm here. I'm in a better place and I'm only going to go up from here and I want you to join me from the for the ride. Remember, I believe in you. Personal connection leads to an influential network. Thanks for networking with Michelle.